Hey everybody, Chad Westport here, and we are back with another episode in this special series with Dr. Mayabi Shields, and we are talking about the endocannabinoid system, how it relates to you, and in this episode, we are going to talk about cannabinoids and their reactions. Now, this can include ones, as we learned in the last episode, endo, made within us, Phyto, those are from outside, coming from our lovely cannabis plant. So, Again, I will ask you, how are you doing today? <laughs> I'm doing great. I'm curious. Well, okay, let's see what the question is. What what types? Inter- there are so many interactions. <laughs> yes. Well, one of the things that we hear about, a lot about lately is, you know, the, the synergistic effect or okay. the entourage or the whole plant effect. Uh, maybe some of these different cannabinoids, like uh, we briefly covered THC and CBD, um, but what about some of these other things like CBG, THCV? Uh, you're the expert here, so I'll let you totally. do the initial soup. Uh, okay, fun fun fact. This is the only fun fact. And then I'll get back to <laughs> then I'll get back to answering the question. I swear. Um, fun fact about the entourage effect is that the word the so the entourage effect was originally coined to describe the endocannabinoid system. Oh, wow. Within within us, because we have what I showed in the in the last video, we have two AG and we have an endamide, but we also have a bunch of other sort of endocannabinoid like molecules that are really, really similar. So like basically like they have the same super long tail, like same really, really long tail, but then this part is different here. Okay. We have one of them that's called n arachidinoyl dopamine, which basically it's a dopamine molecule on the end right here. We have n arachidinoyl hmm. serotonin where there's a serotonin molecule on the end here. Um, if people are curious, they're sometimes called elmiric acids, E-L- M-I-R-I-C acids. Um, and it's, it varies who you talk to, whether or not they think they're part of the endocannabinoidome. Um, I think they are personally. And I think that they're fascinating because they're literally an endocannabinoid shoved on with a serotonin or, or a dopamine. But so there's a bunch of them and the entourage effect was originally coined to describe the endocannabinoid system and kind of like mm. the interaction of all of the, the large, like, mostly anandamide and 2-AG, but these balances between the two and how it's actually the different levels of both of them will cause very, very different reactions in the body. And so um, in terms of how it, it plays into cannabis and like strain specificity and all these different things, I mean, there's more in the cannabis plant than just the cannabinoids, right? There are terps, there are esters, there are there are so many other things. And then, you know, what I was studying before real isolates. And then if you smoke dab or vape, then you're setting it on fire. And so you're creating a whole bunch of other rare molecules as well. Um, And it does, in my opinion, it does affect the way that they feel. And I mean, I've talked about it at length that I think that even with edibles, there is definitely something there where there are different, they feel different, right? Edibles that are created with distillate or isolate versus like, just a butter or Mm -hmm. something that is full spectrum. Um, And in terms of like the rares and the rare cannabinoids and what the differences are there, they're very similar to in shape. And so they will compete in some ways they compete for the same receptors. Um, For the most part, I think they compete with the enzymes also. So I think Mm -hmm. I mentioned it in the first time enzymes are little machines that are breaking down or chewing up these molecules and the phytocannabinoids, the ones that come in the plant in cannabis, they also get deactivated by enzymes. They Mm. also get chewed up by enzymes and they also kind of clog up the endocannabinoid enzymes. Like if you imagine the enzyme is a little Pac-Man and it's chewing up the endocannabinoids, they will get in there and they'll clog it up. And then you end up with more endocannabinoids too. I mean, this is something that's been shown with like CBD with a number of different enzymes. Mm. Um, And it's, it's pretty common for drugs to do that. Like if you've ever taken Advil, uh, or Aleve, then you've taken a drug that has done this because it turns off the enzyme called COX. Um, yeah. And so these shapes being really similar will will play off of each other like that. And it's it's infinite though. I mean, it gets it gets really, really complicated. So let me go back to THC because I can pretty easily um, 
I can pretty easily show you the difference between THC and THCV because it's really only about shortening the end of that chain. And it's funny. Remember mm -hmm. how I said endocannabinoids are, are omega-6 fatty acids? Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, THC has that same piece right there. That's delta-9 THC. If we do THCV, we are just popping off two of these, and then now we have three. So this would be omega-4, actually, one, two, three, mm. four. It's not because it's not because it's not a fatty acid and THC doesn't follow that. But, um, but it has only three, uh, only three carbons that they need. So that's the only difference because otherwise it's pretty much exactly the same. And then THCP, um, we'll just have two more added on to the end. So THC, delta-9 THC, the one that we all know and love the best, will mm. have five. One, two, three, four, five. THCV, if you pop these off, only has three. Wow. And this change is a big enough change to make it have some of the like opposite effects. It's it's crazy that that really small change will do that, but it'll change the way that it binds the receptor. Um, and if this is present, if THCV is present, it will be competing with, or maybe it's activating some of the receptors in a different way that THC is over here. And then the total domino effect is different because right. it's not just one receptor and one molecule. Um, like one gram of cannabis has like millions upon millions upon mil wait, millions upon millions upon millions of molecules. It's like a million times a million Damn. times a million number of them. They're, they're so in wow. like one gram of, of isolate, right? So um, there's a lot of these going on. <laughs> and if you're taking different ones in different combinations, then yeah. there's a chance that they're either directly competing with one another. There's a chance that they are activating different things at different times and that it's contributing to the effects. Uh, I, another one that you mentioned, so I'm going to put this back on so that it's THC because that's I'll show you, I'll go first to CBD because it's kind of cool. So CBD is a two ring structure instead of three. You chain, you take that out and all of a sudden it's not a third ring. It becomes two rings and that's CBD is a two ring structure like this. It has a double bond here instead, but see, there's no ring. That's CBD. Now CBG is a one ring structure. So this will be the only ring that's left. I'm going to take out this bond right here like this. And then you got to swap the direction of this one. So they're all kind of similar, but oh, I guess very similar to one at another. The like base level, though, they're you know just two bonds can cause a an opposite reaction. So totally. similar but very different. Similar but very very different. All right, this is CBG. Um, cannabigerol. And the reason why it seemed like it was really easy for me to go from CBG to C or from THC to CBD to CBG, actually the plant goes in the other direction. So mm -hmm. people might have heard CBG called the mother of all cannabinoids. And it's actually not, um, that is not the way that it is. It is in the plant, it's the acid derivative, right? You're a grower. So all the growers will know that there is no, not no, but there's limited amounts of THC present in the flower. The flower actually has THCA, carboxylic acid present, um, and CBDA and it, CBGA. Um, this is a carboxylic acid. This will go right on here like that. Boop. This is now CBGA. So the plant will make this first. That's why CBG is sometimes called the mother of all cannabinoids. Um, but something, it's really flexible. I have noted that about CBD. I think CBG is fascinating. It has activity somewhere right in between CBD and THC. And I mm. do think it, it feels that way. I do think it feels kind of right in between. It does interact with the CB1 receptor. It does hit a lot of the, um, it hits a lot of this different class of receptors called the TRIP receptors, um, transient receptor potentials. They're, the, the vanilla receptor, like one of the ones that interacts with vanilla inside of our, our taste buds is part of this like class of receptors. Wow. Um, and yeah, it, it interacts with a lot of those. And I do feel like its effects are right in line with in between <laughs> CBD and THC, which is interesting um, because it doesn't look like them at all. But it, the reason why the plant, it was easy for me to do that is because the plant will take this and will take this and turn it into either THC or, or CBD. Um, so first, so that's why if you, uh, people who harvest early will get CBGA likely in their, um, in their flower, right? Because it hasn't yet 
gone through the process of creating this bond that, you know, creating this bond to make it into either CBD or adding the two, oops, adding the two bonds to make it into THC. That is fascinating. That is, wow. That is great stuff because I'm at a, I'm at a loss for words. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I mean, it's not, it's not well understood how they interact together. Uh, something that I talk about a lot is that my favorite mixture is actually 40, 40, 20, CBG, CBD, THC flour. I mix them hmm. into like a little salad. Okay. So I like keep my main grinder. I keep my like biggest grinder, just 50, 50 CBD and CBG hemp. Um, and then I get to add in whatever THC flour I've got going on because I like to change that one up more. Um, or I feel like there's more variability. And that's something that I, I've it's kind of been a staple of mine that I've been doing for a while now where it's super mellow. It's like a daytime. It's like a very, very mellow, no anxiety, like very moderate experience. And it's mixing a lot of these in a way that kind of they buffer each other. And what you're saying about interactions, the entourage effect, um, you know, we don't, I, I don't think that we know enough for me to like say like, oh yeah, by doing that mixture, I'm definitely buffering THC. And that is what causes this like reduction of intensity. And, and it's also, you know, that they potentiate each other. Cause I do feel like THC is necessary in my opinion. And THC makes the effects of the other, it, it helps with the other cannabinoids. At least that's been my experience um, using CBD isolate versus CBD flower, for example, that mm -hmm. has THC in it. Um, and then also using the same amount of CBD flower, but then increasing THC by adding flour back in. Um, it is my opinion, though, that THC will potentiate the activity of some of the rares like CBG um, or CBD, which is not the really rare, but um, and that you can get beneficial effects from mixing them together. I, I'm a big proponent of that. I definitely think that chemo diversity or the diversity of the chemicals, the molecules in um, different products like they feel different mm -hmm. and i think people are, are aware of it that's why like when we're trying like you know it's one of the main differences also between like just a straight distillate that you know is 80 something percent thc it'll be reproducible sure but right. um i don't know for me not always the best time <laughs> like <laughs> Well, you know, I think that's actually a huge gold nugget for a lot of people out there and for a lot of people who are curious and want to experience some of these cannabinoids and the minor cannabinoids. Like you mentioned, a lot of these are found in higher concentrations in hemp, like your CBGs, your CBDs. So I think that is an excellent thing for people to, you know, take away uh, from this episode is that that potential exists. Learn more about these cannabinoids, their reactions and some of the benefits and how they interact together, because then you can kind of custom tailor something for your particular body, your particular situation. Like you said, it's not a one size fits all thing, but there's directions you can go with it. Totally. And those of us who have a lot of experience end up knowing that, right? Like we know we're like, oh, I'm going to go to a, so I'm going to go be social. Like I, yeah want it to be a little more like this or like, you know, it, it's something that comes with a lot of experience, but it's also something that could be intentionally, you know, you could intentionally be trying to shoot for something that is that, you know, is that way. And that's something I think is, um, needs more awareness because a lot of people are just sort of like, no, I'll roll the dice with what it feels like. And I, right. I don't think that that's, you can know, I mean, especially this is not on topic of cannabinoids, but I do feel like terpene profile matters. I feel like mm -hmm. the nose knows. That's what everyone always says. The nose knows. <laughs> yep, yep. I mean, you know, yep. <laughs> and it, it contributes as well. So, and we, we have early evidence of that, but there's still, it's, I mean, this is still an early and exciting time, right? Like the question is whether or not we had that evidence at the molecular level, would it change the way that we feel about all of the evidence that we have in the community? Um, I, anyways, that's just like a philosophical <laughs> question no it's perfect and that's something i guess we will leave people to ponder ponder that folks until the next episode we will be back with this special series again featuring dr mayavi shields uh get your questions into the comments and to find her please go to the description or the links down in the description give her a follow learn much more than what we're offering here we're just scratching the surface of her knowledge so thank you again for being here and we will catch everybody next time see you then Fuck you.